NASA's most recent attempt to launch the game-changing Artemis 1 moon rocket was called off again because the space agency couldn't stop a fuel leak that was found during tanking. Technical problems have stopped the spacecraft from taking off twice in the last few days. Even though Artemis 1 won't land on the moon, this mission will still be the farthest any human-made spacecraft has ever gone into space. In today's video, we will give you the latest news about NASA's Artemis 1 moon mission. So stay tuned till the end. NASA's historic Artemis 1 mission to the moon has been put off again because engineers found a leak in the fuel system of the rocket. Even though Artemis 1 won't land on the moon, the trip will be the farthest that a spaceship made for humans has ever gone into space. There won't be any people on NASA's big trip, but there will be three astronauts, Helga, Sohar, and Munikin Campos. They are high-tech mannequins, which is the term for human models used in scientific research. They are full of sensors that will test how the human body reacts to space travel. Helga and Sohar are made to measure how radiation affects women's bodies in space, and Munikin Campos will sit in the commander's seat to see how bumpy a trip to the moon might be for future human crew members. Even though these mannequins may not look like much by themselves, they will be very important to NASA's plans to build a new way to the moon and eventually send astronauts to Mars. They are also one of many science experiments on the mission that are meant to help us learn more about space travel. Liftoff was supposed to happen on August 29th, but NASA had to delay it because of a nearby thunderstorm and problems cooling one of the rocket's engines. NASA once again delayed the mission and rescheduled for September the 2nd because of the fuel system leak. Now the agency says that the mission could start at the end of September, or it could be pushed back until October. As soon as NASA figures out how to fix things, the space launch system, the most powerful rocket NASA has ever built, will take off with the Orion spacecraft on its nose. Once this spacecraft leaves orbit, Orion will go by the moon and then thousands of miles past it before turning around and heading back to Earth. This 1.3 million mile, 42 day trip will take the spacecraft past the moon and then thousands of miles past it. Artemis is the next step in sending people to the moon. It's part of NASA's bigger plans for exploring the moon, which include sending astronauts on, on treks across the surface, building a place for people to live on the moon, and building a new space station called Gateway. Artemis 1 also lays the groundwork for the next two missions in the Artemis program. In 2024, Artemis 2 will send people on a similar trip around the moon. And in 2025 or later, Artemis 3 will land the first woman and the first person of color in the moon's surface. All of the research being done on Artemis 1 including on Helga, Sohar, and Munikin Campos, is meant to prepare for these later missions. The SLS, which will take NASA to the moon, was made to carry a very heavy load. The rocket is only a few meters taller than the Statue of Liberty, and it can push 8.8 .8 million pounds. Like other launch systems, the SLS is made up of several different stages. Each of these stages helps the rocket escape Earth's gravity break through the atmosphere, and reach space. To do this, the SLS has two solid rocket boosters in a core stage that is 212 feet tall and has more than 700,000 gallons of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen in it. NASA has never made a core stage that is bigger than this one. After takeoff, the boosters will fire for about two minutes before they separate from the vehicle, fall back toward the ground, and land in the Atlantic Ocean. At eight minutes, the core stage will do the same. The interim cryogenic propulsion stage will take over at that point and go around the Earth once. About 90 minutes into the flight, the ICPS will give Orion the big push it needs to start flying toward the moon, and then it'll fall away. Even though the SLS is new, it is based on older technology. Several of its parts, including its main engines, come from or are based on systems used by the NASA Space Shuttle program, which ended in 2011. 
Blue Origin tried to get the $2.9 billion contract to build NASA's lunar landing system, but SpaceX beat them to it. Orion has a lot of support. NASA made it especially for Artemis missions, but it could also be used for trips to nearby asteroids or Mars. Lockheed Martin made the spacecraft, which from the outside looks like a big turkey bastard with wings coming out of its sides. The Artemis crew module lives in Orion. Astronauts who are going to or coming from the moon will spend time there. Once the spacecraft is ready for humans, the crew module is expected to have a variety of space travel amenities, such as sleeping bags, a variety of new NASA recipe space food bars, and a redesigned space toilet that works for both men and women in zero gravity. The main passengers on this mission will be a group of science experiments. One test uses the NASA mannequins Sohar and Helga, which are made of 38 slices of plastic that are meant to look like human tissue. They also have more than 5,600 sensors and 34 radiation detectors. There is a lot of radiation in space, which makes people worry that future astronauts might be at a higher risk of getting cancer, especially as space trips get longer and more difficult. Orion is also carrying an experiment to see how radiation affects yeast. Researchers plan to put freeze-dried yeast under one of the crew seats on the Orion spacecraft. After three days in space, the yeast will be exposed to liquid. When Orion gets back to Earth, scientists will look at the yeast's DNA to see how well it did. The experiment could help people figure out how to stay healthy on space trips in the future. In addition to that, a voice assistant based on Amazon's Alexa is going along for the ride. NASA is testing Callisto, which is a set of hardware and software designed by Amazon, Cisco, and Lockheed Martin to help astronauts talk to each other. Mission Control will be able to send audio and video messages to a tablet inside the Orion capsule, where a version of Alexa will receive the message and respond. Some of Artemis 1's payload is more emotional than others. On Orion, there will be a plush Shaun the Sheep doll based on the character from the Wallace and Gromit movies. So will a Snoopy doll dressed up as an astronaut and a comic strip wrapped around a pen nib that Charles M. Schultz used to draw the Peanuts series. A small sample of moon dust and a piece of an engine from the Apollo 11 mission which put the first people on the moon's surface in the 1960s are also going. Some of the most important research projects that Artemis 1 did won't be coming back to Earth. Small satellites called CubeStats will be sent into orbit around the moon as part of the mission. These satellites will gather information that NASA and private companies may be able to use in the future to help people get around and on the moon. Infrared imaging will be used by the lunar satellite to study the safety of the lunar surface. This could help decide where astronauts will go in the future. The Lunar Ice Cube satellite will try to find sources of water on the moon, which NASA might be able to use in the future. Nia Scout, another satellite, will go to a small nearby asteroid. This side trip could help plan future crewed missions to other asteroids. The satellites will be sent into space by a different part, called the Origin Stage Adapter, once the spacecraft is far enough away to be safe. These satellites show that NASA cares about a lot more than just going to the moon. The Artemis program is preparing for a level of activity on the moon's surface that has never been seen before. NASA has said that it wants to build an economy on the moon, and the space agency has also created the Artemis Accords, a set of rules for exploring the moon that more than 20 countries have now signed on to. NASA wants to use the moon as a stopover on the way to Mars, which is a much more ambitious goal. At the moment, it looks like that might happen in the late 2030s. But even though many of these plans are still a long way off, it's clear that the Artemis program is much more than just a copy of the Apollo program. So that's all for today's video. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, then hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you will always be notified.